Good morning, students of class 11. It's a welcome back to another video lecture here. Today, uh, we will be starting our new chapter, the eighth chapter, Chemical Kinetics. And your test of sixth chapter will be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Okay? Uh, and uh, by Thursday, you will get an email from a website uh, that your email is registered for the test. So it will be me uh, making the question, taking the test, you will be there, but the website will play a platform for us to connect, all right? So we can assess each other's performance in that test, all right? Uh, if you haven't sent me your email, you can send me now, all right? And if you don't receive that email on Thursday at 8 p.m., then you can contact me that what happened, why is your email not registered? Then I will again register it. Now, before we start the eighth chapter, I want to explain a few things. Number one, seventh chapter has already been taught by Sir Fayaz to you people. Now, I don't know what topics you have reached up to and what topics were left. All right? So I would, on my own, I'm trying to focus on few topics such as uh, um, uh, standard hydrogen electrode or electrode potential, I will teach you that. Balancing of equation by ion electron method, I will teach you that again. Uh, and oxidation number and pH. Uh, these topics, I will, uh, these two topics, I will teach you again from this chapter. The oxidation number and how do we do? find it out. The balancing of equation by ion electron method and of course the electron potential. But this will be after we complete our eighth chapter. All right, so here we go. Let's start our uh, eighth chapter as soon as possible. Okay, let's see what is inside it and what is this chapter all about. This chapter, as the name suggests, chemical kinetics. Now, what is kinetics? The word kinetic means moving, all right? Moving. Now, what is chemical kinetics? Uh, what is moving in chemistry? Chemical reaction is moving in chemistry from left to right. Reactants converting to products, okay? This chapter is exclusively about irreversible reactions. Yeah, because in a reversible reaction, the rate is kind of confusing. So we go for the uh, irreversible reaction. Only. So what do you mean by chemical kinetics? By chemical kinetics, there are four points, there are four meanings of it. Number one, we understand what is rate of reaction. Rate of reaction, in other ways, we can say speed of the reaction, okay? So the first thing that we learn is the rate of reaction, right? Number two, uh, how can you increase or decrease the rate of reaction at your will? Yes, and uh, the mechanism through which reaction is proceeding, because that is the mechanism which is making the reaction either slow or fast or maybe higher rate or a slower rate. If you are an industrialist, you want a faster rate, okay? And the last and last point is um, uh, maximum condition for the optimum yield of products. So there are four uh, main things that chemical kinetics deals with. It will open your book, first page of the eighth chapter, you will see one, two, three, four. That these are the four things with which the science of chemical kinetics deals with. First, the rate of reaction, and what is it? Two, mechanism through which the reaction proceeds. Four, factors affecting the rate, which means how can we control the rate? And last is, what are the best conditions under which we can make a reaction slow or fast. All right, so let's begin with the first topic in this chapter. And the first topic in this chapter, my dear friends, is, yeah, chemical kinetics. 
it deals with what? It deals with the rates of chemical reactions. It deals with the factors which affect the chemical reaction. And it deals with the mechanism through which the reaction proceeds. Because it's the mechanism which makes a reaction slow or fast or having a rate low or high. And of course, the optimum condition for maximum yield of products. This graph is not new for you. You have already seen this graph before. The reactant and the product. What is the x-axis? The x-axis is time. What is y-axis? Concentration. If you have learned six chapter chemical equilibrium, you obviously have seen it, that the reactants are, they are going from top to bottom. Why from top to bottom? Because they were high initially and now their concentration is decreasing. Okay, now did you notice one thing here? The orange line, not the orange line from in the Punjab, I'm saying this orange line in the graph. This orange line is touching the x-axis, which means this is an irreversible reaction and reactants are finally becoming zero. So you can see as the graph goes from top to bottom, right? As the graph goes from top to bottom, you can see this one, right? The, the, in the beginning, the graph comes down very fast, but then in the graph, the, the graph gets like straight down and then a little bit slowly, slowly. It means that it is just by the law of mass action. In the beginning, the amount of reactant is high. As time passes, the amount gets low. So the rate of chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of active masses of the reactant. So it's just that. So there are two rates. Uh, but they're equal. That's funny, right? The rate of forward, the, the, the no, the rate of uh, making of products is the same as the rate of uh, reacting of the reactants. So reactants consume and products form. Let's say, how can we define it of reaction? Define a reaction, we just divide these two, the y-axis by x-axis. The y-axis, concentration upon time. So if there's an increase in concentration of the reactants upon time, you can tell the rate of the reaction very easily. So it is either the increase in concentration of the reactants or it's a decrease, sorry, mistake, increase in concentration of the products or decrease in concentration of the reactants. As mentioned, it is the irreversible reactions. So we move towards our next slide and we can see that what is the rate of reaction. So here we go. During any chemical reaction, my friend, the concentration by any means irreversible only. The concentration of reactants go down with time. Sometimes it takes more time, sometimes it happens quickly. So less time, more concentration faster rate and uh, long time uh, less concentration slower rate it means that the rate of chemical reaction can simply be defined as the increase in concentration of the products upon time or decrease in concentration of the reactants upon time all right so dividing the concentration change by the time to the rate because concentration change is the numerator and time is denominator. So the more time, the more denominator, the lower the quotient. All right. Two means either decrease, decrease in concentration of the reactants upon time or increase. There are two ways to define the rate of reaction increase in concentration of products upon time or the rate at which the products are formed and or the rate at which the reactants are consumed. Okay, the above statement is the uh, definition of rate of reaction. So what is it? 
decrease in concentration of reactants upon time in which the decrease takes place. Increase in concentration of products divided by time. So this is how we define the rate. Mole per dmq per second, because mole per dmq is concentration upon time per second. It's the unit of uh, rate of reaction. Now, there's also a term velocity of reaction. And rate of reaction and velocity of reaction, how they are saying? Let's, let's see about that. If I have taught you in physics, velocity, I must have taught you about average velocity and also instantaneous velocity. Do you remember? Uh -huh. when, when we are, when, when you, you drive from Karachi to Kutha town, 100 kilometers in one hour, you will say what? My speed was 100 kilometers per hour. Were you really all the time at 100? No. Sometimes you are 50, sometimes you are 40, sometimes you are 120. So what is this 100 km per hour? It is the average speed, that total distance covered by total time. Okay? But the speed at one time is called instantaneous speed. If you look at your car's speedometer, its speed changes all the time. So that speed in, 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 in a part of a second, less than one second, is called instantaneous speed. So here same, the total change in concentration upon total time is called the rate, and the instantaneous rate is called velocity of reaction. Right? Since the rate of reaction is not constant throughout the reaction, therefore we cannot determine the uniform rate. Okay? There is a faster rate in the beginning and gets slower as time passes. So we may define velocity of reaction as the rate at a particular time. That time is very small. We use limits of time, if you remember, limits of time 10 to 0 in physics. Uh, luckily, in your syllabus in chemistry, they don't use those symbols. Okay. So velocity of reaction is a rate at a particular time. It's called the specific rate of reaction. If we consider small interval of time, delta t, and let this time be very, very small. So change in concentration delta x, in this way, dx upon dt will be the velocity of reaction. Actually, not really. Actually, dx upon dt, d for delta, change in concentration upon change in time is called the average rate. However, by using lim limits of time, then it's velocity. But I guess in our book, they haven't mentioned it, so we are cool with it. They use same symbol for both. Even our book says that for simplicity, we use the dx by dt for both the rate and the velocity of reaction. Okay, so velocity of reaction is basically the instantaneous rate. So A, reactant, B, products. What's happening? minus delta A. Why? Because A is decreasing. Change in concentration of A. Okay? And they both rates are equal because A is making B. So at the rate at which A is breaking down, at the same rate B is forming. Okay? So why, why, why there's a minus with A? Because A is decreasing. And so we use minus delta x upon delta t because for the for the reactants and plus for the products because they are making. So you can see there are some clocks here. See the time, 0 second, 10 second, 20 and so one minute. So these, uh, the reaction takes place, you know, and the, and the black balls and red balls, they react with time. So what happened in the first 10 seconds, it will be a very high rate. And as you go further, the rate goes down because the law of mass, mass action says that the rate is directly proportional to the active mass. So in the beginning, A has a lot of active mass. You can see it's all A. The black, all A. The black ball means the A. And the red ball means B. So slowly, slowly, red balls are forming until all the black balls convert into the red balls. Okay, this is the reaction. So, 
the graph of A is in blank, goes down with time, and B is like, see the graph in the beginning goes sharply down, but then gets more and more and more flatter, because as time passes, active mass of A gradually decreases, and the rate at which A breaks down, slows down. So there are two rates, if you divide overall time, like 0 to 40 concentration, divided by 0 to 16 time, it's called the rate. But if you take any one black dot right there, you see the black dots? At any instant you want to you want to find out the, the rate, that is called instantaneous rate. For this, you have to make a tangent, a line that touch on that black, black dot. And then you make a, a perpendicular and base to it. I'll show you. Cool? So suppose this is a, a reaction where Bromine is converting into this, okay? You can see at different black dots, the hypotenuse, the tangent becomes hypotenuse. This is tangent, this is tangent, this is tangent. You can see in these three triangles, the first triangle has a large perpendicular and small base. But as time, as time passes, the base gets longer, longer, longer because the, it's taking more and more time, the rate is dropping. 2.96, this is an instantaneous rate, at the 100th second, or two, at the 200th second, 2.09, and then 1.48, these three are the instantaneous rate. However, overall concentration change by time will be called the average rate, or just the rate. So, bromine Br2 is minus, because the bromine is getting decreased, finally, minus initial. So this is called the sum of tangent, 2.96, 2.09, and 1.48. It shows that how rate is decreasing gradually with time. It's going from 2.9 to 2.96, 2.09, and from 2.09 to 1.48. As you can see, in different seconds, the rate uh, 4, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 6, 6, 6, a drop in the rate of formation of this. However, rate constant is same. Okay? Rate constant can only be changed by temperature. So this is a graph of further products. So the rate depends upon means vector mass. In the beginning, you have a lot of vector mass, you have a lot of rate. So as the rate goes, if the vector mass goes down, the rate goes down. And where K stands for the rate constant. So rate constant is the ratio of the rate to the concentration of the vector mass of the reactants. And you know it from the system pretty well. It's almost constant, 3.5, not changing. Only temperature can change it. So what are the units? Basically, rate, reaction rate, or velocity reaction will be dealt equally in our this book because our our book says for of simplicity, we want to have them both same. So it will be concentration units divided by the time. At this basic level, we shall treat velocity and rate of reaction as the same quantity. All right, in actual sense, the rate, of, rate is average. Overall change by overall time. Velocity is the instantaneous rate. But they both are measured in the molarity divided by time. So units of rate depend upon the rate of equation. Okay. But yeah, the rate equation. What is the rate equation? We will see later on. The units are not, are basically concentration upon time, but the unit come from the rate equation and the rate law, which you will learn in next talk. So first order, mole per dm cube per second. Second order, mole per dm cube mole square per second. Third order like that, I hope you, I can go back. Now what is order is a thing that uh, uh, if you are in first year, you won't know, but I'll explain. There, there, there are, 
first order, there is a second order, okay? So first order, it's like this uh, mode per dm cube. Second order, it's like mode per dm cube whole square. Why is that so? We'll, we'll see later on. But for now, rate lost is same unit, concentration upon time. Mole per dm cube per second. All right, so I hope you have understood rates, uh, rates and velocities of reaction, and generally what is the chemical uh, chemical uh, kinetics. And uh, that's uh, enough for today. Uh, you can just uh, because you're also studying the uh, sixth chapter for your test on Wednesday. The test of first year chemistry is on Wednesday at 8 p.m. So I'm not giving you too much work. Just do this work and show show to me. Tomorrow we will learn about the rate expression. Remember, very few lectures are remaining, and then our chemistry is completely over. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Bye.